Last year on Easter, I took a look at one Easter egg in every Bond film. This year, in honor of Easter, I decided it would be fun to take a look at the most well-known Easter eggs in Bond fandom. Producer Michael G. Wilson famously made a cameo in almost every Bond film since the mid-70s. Sometimes he's even seen in the same Bond film multiple times. So, I thought it would be a fun idea to make a comprehensive list showcasing all the times this beloved producer made a cameo in the Bond films, going in chronological order. Though Michael G. Wilson didn't start to make a habit out of his cameos until the mid-70s, he did actually cameo as far back as Goldfinger in 1964 as one of Goldfinger's goons raiding Fort Knox. It's kinda hard to know which of the soldiers is actually Michael G. Wilson, but some suggest he's the one in front of the truck over here. As time went on and Michael G. Wilson gained a more prominent role within Eon Productions, he started to cameo more prominently too, starting with The Spy Who Loved Me in 1977, where he prominently is seen as one of the audience members at the Pyramid Show. Though it was never officially confirmed, some believe he made a second cameo in The Spy Who Loved Me in the climax as one of the goons, and supposedly this one is Michael G. Wilson as well. Again, this is hard to say. His beard does look similar to the way it looked in the same film, so it could very well be him, but again, it was never really confirmed. What do you guys think? By the time of Moonraker, Michael G. Wilson became the executive producer, and in this film he made three cameos. First off, he makes a cameo in Venice, outside of the Fanini glass shop, walking around with a child. His second appearance, also in Venice, is more hard to depict and is more of a, well, this is really him kind of thing. He's the guy standing on the bridge in the background when Bond is having his conversation with M. I'm still yet to see an image of this more crisp to really confirm it for myself, but supposedly this is true. His most obvious cameo in Moonraker, of course, is near the climax, where he appears as a NASA technician and actually gets a line of dialogue. Roger. Doesn't look good at all. It's over 200 meters in diameter. It does seem his voice is dubbed for this one, or maybe he put up more of an American accent, but in any case, this is definitely the one you can't miss in this film. He made one blink it and you miss it cameo in For Your Eyes Only, appearing as the priest at the Greek wedding in Sin Cyrus. Two cameos are known in Octopussy, first appearing in the Soviet conference room, all the way on the left, over here, and also appearing as a tourist in India, pulling Bond into the boat when he's being chased by Kamal Khan's goons. I don't think there are any on-screen cameos known for A Few to a Kill, but you can make out his voice really quietly in the background as Bond and Stacy look for the records in the city hall. Definitely his hardest to spot cameo. It's really obscure. In The Living Daylights, he shows up pretty prominently in the opera, only two seats away from Saunders. Much like A Few to a Kill, License to Kill doesn't have a known on-screen cameo, but again, you can hear his voice, this time more prominently in the beginning of License to Kill. If they hurry, they just might be able to grab the basket. Entering the 1990s, where Wilson of course became the producer alongside Barbara Broccoli, his cameos also became more prominent. Starting with Goldeneye, where, just like Octopussy, he once again features as a Russian consul member, which you absolutely cannot miss, prominently featured in the frame. Speaking of prominent cameos, in Tomorrow Never Dies, you absolutely cannot miss him either as he features as a character that actually has a name and some dialogue. Inspired, sir. And after he signs the bill, release the tape anyway. Consider him slimed. He appears in the casino when the world is not enough and lets Electra sign the check and stands in the background while they are playing. 
For the 40th anniversary in Die Another Day, I guess Mickey G thought it was time to appear twice again, as he's the guy leaning against the car in the Cuba scenes, but he also appears as General Chandler alongside Michael Madsen and Judy Dance in the climax scenes. His biggest cameo yet is of course in Casino Royale, where he plays the chief of police that Mathis points out over his shoulder. He's not a subtle background extra this time, but actually gets arrested during the scene and plays a part in the plot for a little bit. In Quantum of Solace he goes back to the more subtle background extra, making a cameo as the man reading the newspaper in the Haitian hotel lobby. In Skyfall he's in another blink it and you miss it cameo, which supposedly would have been longer but ended up in a deleted scene, but he shows up at the funeral of the MI6 officials. You can barely make him out in the door opening. In Spectre he shows up together with his son as the man talking with C. His son actually did already make a cameo before in Skyfall as well during the Scorpion sequence in Turkey. Maybe in the future films his son will become the producer of the Bond films and the torch of the cameos will be passed to him as well. And lastly, his latest cameo in No Time to Die was in the Spectre Room where he was seen at Blofeld's birthday. That's it for all the known Michael G. Wilson cameos in the Bond films. I really hope I didn't miss any. Leave your comments below, like and subscribe and see you guys in the next video.